Hello everyone and welcome to this for the first episode of Media Watch. Media Watch is one for the initiative of Media Association of Solomon Islands, Masi. Main work of Masi is to make sure that the journalists keep in honor, integrity and independence of media and to make sure media achieve the highest standards of journalistic ethics lo day-to-day -day reporting for news. Masi, lo kata years before kasim this for a time, hemi go ahead for help him okata member blo him through training for help come up from survey blo kata lo kata different issues as well as establishing him celebra or the main body where representing every media lo country. Okata member blo Masi, hemi include him okata journalist re waka lo kata traditional media with him online media over the communication officers and public relation officers, no government, non-government organizations, within civil society organizations, Sahala videographers, photographers, visual editors, and broadcast technicians, Okata also member Blomasi. This fella program Media Watch he may bring him come together or got a senior journalist look at the media industry for talk about him issues for making news and work a block at out with the media in general. With the middle of first episode blow Media Watch he me Erin Angiki who he me sub editor blow Island Sun newspaper work a blow sub editor mainly he me for checking news we got the reporters and journalists he write him and also Alfred Sasako who he me chief of staff Law Solomon Star newspaper. Alfred has been got more than 40 years experience in the media industry. And then on my right, he has got Ofani Eremai, who has been one for a senior journalist in Solomon Islands too. He has been Waka or some editor for a long time, little bit. Lo one look at the local newspaper, Blue Yumilo Country. And now he has been doing freelance work and currently enjoying it. And also George Hemming, Director of Government Communication. George Hemming, one for a senior journalist in the country. Hemming been Waka, the mainstream media, lo before. Before Hemming been, uh, before Hemming go inside the government for Waka, awesome director. So Hemming now got a panelist playing me lo media watch for today. And me, Gina Kekia, moderator and host play me lo this fala program. So, gentlemen, welcome to this first episode of Media Watch, our line of discussion by by Hemi Law Media in a state of emergency. Or some plan the live for save, or everyone live for save. That country blue you me, Hemi Garam one for a state of public health emergency where Governor General Hemi make him this for a declaration. Lo March lo this for a year. And then later, Lo July more, Governor General Hemi declare that state of emergency Hemi remain low country until number 25 lo this for a month, uh, Lo 2020. Alfred, you one being in the media industry where you work at not only the Solomon Islands, but also uh, you got an experience, vast experience in the region. Uh, this fall state of emergency, Hemi the first where country Hemi got him of its kind now, yeah? and uh, you being um, a journalist, you also um, go ahead for dream stories, write them stories. Do you feel any differently time you write him about the stories play this time compared to um, uh, previously, where even got a state of emergency? Uh, no, Gina, I don't think there is any that much difference. Um, media Hemi continue to play a role. Unfortunately, I think uh, in the state of emergency where you got uh, a Hemi look also a lot of people uh, even more frightened to come out and say, you know, uh, whatever that uh, or the life or talent. And I think one or two organizations, they speak through their organization, some fella, uh, like the Solomon Island Nurses Association, for example, which has now been uh, suspended. Uh, they, I think they have uh, issues that they want to discuss with the government, but uh, it would seem that the state of emergency has now been used to uh, uh, not only um, stitch him now, most mm. people for talk talk, uh, but other organization. And I, I think that uh, there's a danger uh, that that uh, one sort of continue for using that one, we become a state where, you know, 
uh, got Mannheim controlling everything. So this idea of control uh, in the use of state emergency now, I think it's a, it's an area of concern. Mm. Uh, and I think, you know, if we are looking at our people, their interest, what them now concerns Blocketa, there should be some kind of a, uh, a you know, um, a, a people-friendly approach. Uh, to try and get their views together instead of being punitive, you know, in punishing people for talem wanem now, thinking block it mm. And, and uh, often you like someone you uh, editor once and you also help to the side like editing this for a time when it comes to issues or same, yeah? uh, well, identifying stories for publication and also like for you, especially during this time of a state of emergency, you think that there are uh, restrictions placed uh, on you, or how you put them out publications too, because this whole state of emergency and order hanging over our head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Gina, me, me think that uh, in as far as how you may uh, journalists may perform a role, believe me, uh, there should not be any difference at all. Yeah? We should be always uh, responsible. Make sure there's balance, there's fair, fairness, law, uh, stories, believe me. Yeah? I think the difference that you uh, may media you may experience in, at this time is that there's a, a set of regulations, set of law where have me, have me in existence now, where have me therefore uh, guide them how we perform our, our job. But I think email or media, you should not uh, feel intimidated, you should not uh, be constrained in how you do your job, believe me. Uh, as long as we do the right thing, as long as we keep to our ethics, we uh, make sure our stories are balanced, I think there shouldn't be any problem with uh, the way we do our job. Thank you. Before we come, Louis George, Ewin, you being sub editor of Island Sun, and um, how are you looking at the reporters play you for the column stories when it comes to balancing of news or some of funny hemi share them him? You you see that the reporters are trying as much as possible to get more balanced news compared to before, or uh, at times uh, you fella have to push them to get the other side of the story because of the uh, restrictions or what. Orders have been placed this fellow time. Thanks. Look, with uh, respect to this uh, current state of emergency, we we are actually uh, putting more emphasis for reporters with uh, travel balancing stories compared to normal time. And to be honest, I have no issues at all with that. We'll get them. Uh, at the balance when stories was still at them. A lot of times we get uh, blaming the communication. That's why we were in good for the look at the no answer OMGs of often come along on reporters and so but yeah him I'm really tough. Mm. George, coming from government side, like um, always, um, emphasis have been uh, placed on journalists for getting balanced this yeah? mm. uh, Usually, look at a press conference, you miss have a hearing too. Or got a, uh, where before, appear before press, you got always have a call of journalists for please, you follow uh, responsible or how you follow share information. You follow get in touch with them, you follow for you follow get them good information and awesome. But one follow thing about journalists have a talent now is that sometimes awesome, even them explaining, yeah, trying to get uh, especially people from the government to respond to. Uh, uh, queries or issues where I come mm. from uh, media, I'm a little bit hard. Like the role which uh, your department has played, uh, uh, do you have a role there for the journalists where for supporting Mogata for getting uh, information from Mogata, persons of interest coming from the government uh, sector? Well, uh, thank you very much, Gina. Uh, before me addressing that uh, particular question, I think from the government perspective, you may we need to ask him this question: Why is this state of emergency him necessary for country blame during this um, public health situation where <clears throat> not only me but uh, the whole world have experienced him? So, for giving clearer picture, the state of emergency him for 
a protective nation from this pandemic, but somehow we have Kasim Lo Imi now, so uh, government have me try and best and put them in orders or regulations for him at least have me contribute for help for reducing, for example, or the people uh, quarantine centers. Uh, incoming passengers who are keep him out there. That is uh, very important, no good uh, anyone go out and then create him a fear or <coughs> uh, uh, community spread. And that is a big concern of government, especially uh, from the oversight committee. So I'm not one, one area where I'm necessitating or making this whole uh, state of emergency have me exist. And although have me First time for him experiencing a longer period of time that he may inside this whole situation. I think uh, from the government perspective, and necessary. Okay, coming back to the question on the accessibility of information from the mainstream media, and which is a very important aspect of uh, uh, society, blame me, that people must be informed of what may happen, and the government as the leader of the, the people he must come out clear. All right, if you notice him that uh, from our unit, I mean the Prime Minister's press office and the government communication unit, we've been advising the government, especially the oversight committee, where government have mandated him for <coughs> take the lead in terms of <coughs> informing people dealing with this whole situation. And if you notice him, we fell uh, straight after the declaration of the state of emergency law 25 March this year by the Governor General, We've been organizing a series of uh, uh, press events. We organize talk, weekly talk bike shows every Sunday on SIBC, and also streamed online for our <coughs> online uh, audience, as well as those of uh, our nationals who are live overseas. And we've been ho holding uh, regular press conferences. Prime Minister have come out every week for making announcements and giving updates on uh, the situation and also uh, most part, let me focus too on this whole economic uh, situation, let me, and how government try for addressing, not only through the economic stimulus package, but other, other important areas where people must survey. And that is what Mifala continue for doing during this period of state of emergency, and Mifala will look forward for continuing with that in an event that uh, COVID had me, had me continue or had me stop, but which we don't think by him stop looking at the figures around the world and the situation, I think that will, will continue in the in the future. Thank you, George. Yeah, Alfred, because uh, Amy here, um, George Hemi, um, since March this this year, Hemi looking Prime Minister Hemi come out, give him a uh, weekly statement. We've had the press conferences coming up late, uh, him come on later. We have had the talk back shows. Um, from a journalist uh, point of view, him, 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 him enough? Do you think the he me answer some the questions, especially when it comes to uh, from a journalist perspective? Him, him, him enough here, yeah? or you think that him just the surface, or there's more we need to know? <clears throat> Gina, I think uh, the the question is uh, whether you know, when you look at it from the perspective of government, whether the government is slightly being biased to give its point of view to the people, yeah? Uh, but I think uh, to the credit of uh, all the media people, or the Prime Minister's, uh, you know, press office and all that, they have uh, taken us to another level where previously we never had any press conferences, uh, on a regular basis as we do now. Uh, however, like uh, the issue of balance, yeah? Uh, now, this, is, uh, this issue of balance will continue to be a controversial one uh, until we have reached a point where uh, people are trained to meet the media to answer and, uh, all the questions blocked there, yeah? Hmm. Uh, I'll give you an example. In March this year, I sent a text message to one of the premiers. I, uh, the name will remain unnamed, yeah? Hmm. Uh, and, and I asked him certain questions about an issue where him involving him. Until today, me not receiving any, any, uh, any response from him. Uh, uh, this year too, me, uh, shortly after the police commissioner was 
was appointed, me sent him one final request that me like him interview him. And interviews are, uh, you know, and me, and, and something that it's on a one-to-one -one basis, yeah. Sometimes you don't want to share it with other members of the media, but it's competition, yeah. Uh, the response was, oh, you can ask your question during the police commissioner's uh, uh, weekly news conference. Now, that to me does, is not acceptable, yeah. In December last year, me make an appointment for looking out, you know, the commissioner of lands. I've never received any response. Now, why now are the people in all the frontline areas here yeah, are not willing to come forward? Even ministers, uh, chairman of caucus, I sent them uh, a request for an interview uh, on the matters of education. I wanted to find out whether the the uh, uh, one about Dumla High School in telling school boards and all that not to send kids home, whether that could be extended to other university students for mm. the Yumi. Mm. As in today, we're not receiving any response. Mm. So the issue of balance, sometimes for me, because <laughs> of uh, different areas where we work on before, sometimes me go one side now. You want to respond, you respond. Today, the problem with media and facing is that once you raise a controversial issue, as I always do, mm. yeah, I become the victim. Mm. Yeah, I become the victim. And I think every, and this is a bad thing for young journalists coming up, yeah, mm. they don't want to uh, be be sort of uh, singled out that over the man, yeah, one side. Maybe, no more, yeah, maybe more that problem. is why I got no response come to you too, yeah, because of the issues that you raise. It's, oh, it's Alfred Sasako again, so we fell out. Yeah, but is it because is you are hitting on the truth or you're mm, getting mm. to the truth that they are not like for come out and explaining the people? Because we basically, as journalists, we're supposed to be the mouthpiece of people who never have or never and never will have an opportunity to speak out on issues that affect them. Yeah. Mm. So, so it's a two side thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, whether that's the view of the Karim, and I know Facebook, you know. Uh, I remember at one point, I printed out 800 pages of adverse comment about the issue of Blomo, uh, former CEO Losipa, mm. Ports Authority. In the end, one lone uh, contributor said, Okataman, there's only one winner or any competition, yeah? Mm. Now that this man, yeah, bought and fired him, what do you say? So sometimes it's not easy to stand alone and face the public when a lot of people are not getting background to other issues. Mm. Yeah, so those, those are the issues for me, me, me getting law, law media, yeah? And it, it's not only in here, in Papua New Guinea too, where I worked for five years, yeah? Mm. Yeah, for Murdoch's paper. Uh, even Michael Smarry, you know, one time, and me, because I went into Bougainville, he threatened to slap me in the face, yeah, yeah, or something like so that. So those are the things that those, yeah, those are the things, especially that people, when you want to go controversial. People issues. must mm. know. Mm. People must know. Yeah. But now so, I'm a little bit. Uh, most journalists now they do not really want to get into the controversial stuff of things. Is that and what that's you're sad saying? for me, mm. okay. Uh, because okay, I'm not suggesting that we should necessarily go into creating mm. controversial issues because we want to be known. But I think there are issues that stand out like a, a, tooth, a sore tooth, where you look in, you look sorry now, issue was same, yeah? So maybe that's, <laughs> and, and, and don't, don't think that Baba I back away mm. because I want to be a good person, blogger man or opposition mm. or independent, no more. Okay. Yeah, we will continue. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Alfred, and thank you, panelists. You're watching uh, Media Watch, One Fala Initiative, Blue Media Association of Solomon Islands, Masi, and this Fala program has me aim for bringing Kamlo you over the issues where affecting media, as well as over the other issues where making news where media has me cover.
Media Hemi Garem Plan de Waka, where apart from informing people, Hemi also got a responsibility for make sure government Hemi Karem out Waka blame good for betterment blow you me everyone lo country. Now, lo this fall time, apart from reporting lo COVID-19, Papa is having look him that media Hemi also cover more than another story too, yeah? Side lo economy, side lo agriculture, even side lo selling lo government. Wait him more than other issues for Hemi um, nation, of national interest for you, me, everyone. And lo this fall time, one fall hot topic where Hemi appear all the way inside lo media now, Hemi this fall economic stimulus package or ESP, or same Emi everyone save lehem, and media hemi barava kavam kam since ESP hemi come into play. Now, Ufani, you, one fella where you stop inside, um, I think you follow two time um, ESP hemi kam, kasim this fella time, hemi look in uh, distribution hemi go out now, mm -hmm. and you follow me cover more the issues, yeah? Uh, yeah? Now more than ever, you me look in, people go ahead for questioning, uh, committee where hemi set up, um, you ever wonder why? Why now? Uh, people are still questioning. Yeah, man, uh, Gina. Uh, ESP, Hemi, I think it's now the hot topic, yeah? A hot topic of country at the moment. And uh, me no surprise because it involves uh, millions of dollars of uh, public funds, yeah? And uh, everyone seems to be fighting over it and... Uh, uh, I think the the why it become so it become a hot topic and uh, seems to be very controversial now is a huge amount of it hemi hemi channel through members of parliament yeah and uh, the government or the, the the committee looking after it managing it hem no really uh, forthcoming about it yeah. Now, ESP Hemi, Hemi, as we say, Hemi, Hemi, Hemi involved in millions of dollars. And uh, time you may look by CDF, uh, the experience there is that a, uh, the CDF money has not been well accounted for. So what members of the public are saying now is if members of parliament are not are, are well accounting for a CDF, how will they 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 do it for ESP, yeah? Mm. Uh, and the role with journalists and playing inside all this, mm. him, him, him important, especially when it comes to covering issues of finances? Yeah, yeah I think I think it, it, in, in Milo Media, we have a, a huge role to play, uh, you know, we're talking about millions of dollars here, and vocabulary uh, of the reporters is to, you know, get into the details of it and uh, relay it to the public, yeah, so that they they know members of uh, of uh, the public, taxpayers know who is receiving what and so forth. Yeah? So, probably uh, media or this whole. Uh, uh, what what do you call it? Yes, uh, ESP. ESP. Yeah, yeah. Hem, hem, I think it's very important, yeah. and uh, we really need to get into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we really need to get to the bottom of the story and uh, get it out there for people to be aware of what's going on in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, besides that, I think uh, the government do need need for especially the committee looking after it, managing it. They they really need to to be open about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Transparent a little bit with him, uh, explain him what people really mean so that people are satisfied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Even me understand him, I think uh, people have been publishing uh, one fella, the other one in the ESP, I think Solomon yes. Statu, uh, but then the, 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 those were the published, and those are the unverified uh, information where PSM in him, where uh, both, I think, Alan San and Solomon Star printed. Uh, in real copies to via this for a week yeah and mm. then um uh, him say him unverified so have have there been any uh one in four try for get him i think at the press conference i'm telling him that they'll be having a database set up and a verified information coming out shortly but uh, despite of that has there been any follow-ups done from from the respective newsrooms from uh, uh feedback i get from my reporters 
this is how I, I'll put it simply. Yeah? It's like there's a wall, brick wall, government lawyer or the uh, committee, the history committee, media and public decide. Now, when we also have a committee just or two press releases, just speaking down a little bit in four finish. Mm. Speaking about oh, gang also more finish. Mm. Now, as a uh, colleague and talent it involves millions and a lot of people in rural areas and as well as the urban ones, they're they were uh, they're looking forward, they're anxious to know who not by receiving them. And since time we okay to start hearing that some of us start to not the same this time, eh? oh, they're still waiting. Mm. Now our media has been trying to gauge details about the Huna recipients and what's the status quo of the things yeah? mm. but they've been uh what the secrecy mm. well, well, even if the response that, is quite vague yeah not they, they talk about transparency now transparency is not it's not just come yeah just mm. give a few words or same you, mm. you can come say the same words you said yesterday and the day before that's not transparent mm. so i'm, I'm making a job really tough on following mm. for travel and for asking what they've done there. Well, eventually when this list come out there, yeah, we thought, hey, okay, this one should help for uh, give more insight or ESP. Mm. Then uh, just come out and bluntly just say, oh, this one is unverified. Mm. So I said, let me go back more to square one. Mm. Okay, so but how, let me wait more for this other software where I'll talk about it. Yeah? Mm. For, for you, Alfred, you follow? You've been, you, you have any luck? We've been following it. Uh, I think, first of all, we like say or say, um, it's never easy mm. for the law oversight and implementation committee uh, for giving out of information. Yeah? For the very reason that many of them are to put the law there by the very politicians whose interests are now being, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, protected through uh, distribution of the funds. Yeah. Mm. Now, uh, and, and to me, uh, me, you know, when you look at the figure, yeah, the uh, three hundred twenty million dollar low ESP, and there's a possibility, a strong possibility that in the new budget, I think there may be some allocation to continue, yeah, mm. uh, low low fund, yeah. Uh, I think the sad thing him or him, yeah. When you look at uh, members of parliament, and this is by no means a criticism of our members of parliament and their respected offices, but if you look at uh, Okata, Okata take him now discretionary funds blocked from parliament. That's yeah. five hundred thousand mm. dollars. Okay, on top of that, Okata take him more this for ESP, yeah, which is six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, we run the story, and Okata try for deny him. Uh, there was a statement of the issue. I saw the statement where I'm ready to go to the to go to bed, meaning go law paper now for next day. Let me look him now. What's the other refuting story? Blow me fall. Yeah, but third paragraph down, fourth paragraph down, they buried the confirmation that yes, some fall honorable or take additional funds. Hmm. So, so the story blow me fall would say that. It, it would appear members of parliament get more than the six hundred thousand dollar yeah mm -hmm. yeah and I think that should be made clear now yeah. someone has called me to say that there's a member of parliament from Malaita him take a I mean Selenia and he's building a road in western province mm. those are the machines yeah allegations. yeah okay. he saw it himself oh but have he you was been there. able to verify that no well that's the problem. Mm. These people are not willing to talk to us about oh, it. Yeah, they so, want to talk behind but not come on yeah, front. Exactly. So, okay. so this this will continue to be a big problem. Mm. Me, so, mm. me, me agree with them. Uh, uh, funny that yeah, it it gives us an even more challenging task mm. to to dig deeper and find out. Yeah, not that because you may like for spoiling government. But we say, no, people are entitled to know because when you look at where now social funds yeah, are taxpayers. Yeah? Mm. And for us as a country, I think about 12, 15 percent of the population no more, you may pay in tax. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. We are shouldering the responsibility. So why now when parliament members or what are, you know, 
they grease their hands with uh, uh, discretionary funds, but the parliament finish. Why not so take them double more? Yeah, mm. yeah? Mm. should should that funding law ESB be directing, you know, exclusively to work with the sectors that you would like them for grow more, at least for keeping more the alive until you may come back to normalcy. Those yeah. are the questions we may like or something too much. Yeah. Mm. But you know, get them I don't, I don't, unfortunately. Yeah. And I don't think that anyone will do it unless <laughs> some fellow man where, you know, they wanted to break away from the, mm. yeah? yeah, I would say, okay, <laughs> some people look here. Mm. I would say. But by and behind the yeah. scenes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, George, you've been listening attentively and quietly <laughs> to all that been said mm. um, coming from your side. Uh, what do you have to say? Well, uh, if you may recall the first announcement where Prime Minister Hemne came law, I think probably March or April March. this year, yeah. and the launching of the economic stimulus package yeah. program. Uh, the intention is for keeping the economy going, going yeah. because uh, impacts of COVID have bar of affecting the economy. Yeah. And the figures were announcing to more than $300 million for help him existing businesses not for new start yeah okay mm. those existing are existing businesses yeah issues where i mean announcement the premise i'm highlighting those areas in the first place uh the and following that time um, implementation phase blow espm start uh chairman or ps blow finance him regularly come on uh, radio talk back shows and a number of press conferences for explaining the process mm. Mm. how now committee him deal with him who is eligible and uh what now verif verification and monitoring process where I ought to go ahead them this time. As you may, if you may recall, by uh, since August this year, bigger companies ought to already pay them out the mm. Ought to pay them out uh, funds through applications blow water. And then uh, this time ought to scale it, I mean, slow down, come down for uh, small operators, low different sectors, some tourism, fisheries, agriculture, and uh, forestry. And just last week, if you may listen back to Lord, this for a press conference where the committee itself come out to explain him the, the process, including the uh, following uh, leakage law documents were published mm. by not only email mainstream, but also online. Yep. And the concern now is that those uh, lists have not really confirmed one yet. And then uh, since people are uh, using for attacking committee, especially government, Mm. On why not things seem slow, why not others no more or the lucky and some fellow no more. So I'm creating a lot of frustration mm. and confusion. So our team, we fall organizing, ask him ESP committee and uh, implementation and oversight committee blue ESP. Yeah. You follow must come out for story yeah. of people. Mm. Let them know what's the truth. Mm. Mm. And then the PS and committee are really explaining good steps and processes were involved with this fella selection mm -hmm. awards uh, which sectors how much different figures were out, out allocating and uh, the the most interesting thing where psme let me highlight him is the verification process because if you recall more than sixteen thousand applicants from all over the country with different uh, figures attached to the applications mm. a lot of different sectors and it's not easy for the committee for just look at it and say, okay, you qualify, you not qualify. Mm. They roll out the process of column law monitoring and, and the verification or they engage him uh, more than 60 youths, mm. graduates, mm. and send them out of the provinces for follow up law applications. Where, say, for example, if from Malaita, or mm. to go really check him out, this one him exists or no more because most. Almost every application not to look good law paper, hmm. but actual or physical existence blame. No, you need to check against him too for make sure this money him well spent. Because him, as you may, may are well, him, he need public funds. Yeah, and he must make sure that him properly accounted for, as a committee him highlighted him last week. Hmm. So the process him, him slow down a little bit from the timeline, the original timeline that uh, government had put him that he may expect him what for implement him and then. The timeline that by me expecting for feeling now returns for this fella mm. uh, support for local businesses. Mm. So the process has been long and a lot of frustration too may happen. A lot of uh, from us, we were looking a lot of 
misinformation him come from frustration. Mm. Uh, we acknowledge that him no him no him no easy, and because he's dealing with like Ofani and Talem, huge amounts of money, mm. who is going to receive it? So there are control measures where you meet take him for what time for release him information or him, what time for not release him. Uh, at this stage, payments have start for go down low uh, at, uh, at smaller sectors. I mean, mm. applicants or yeah. uh, the applicants from different sectors. Say, for example, or agriculture. Uh, they may expect him this week or the noni farmers, okay. honey, kava, or, or start for uh, payment out of the okay. applications. Mm. I, th- and, uh, I think, George, I think one fella think we him a little bit. Um, Missing now is that because communication now him I think seems to be the problem communication breakdown because uh, um, people are not aware of these things him happening yeah so uh, they have questions so when you have communication breakdown you'll mm. see people asking questions even the media too mm. uh, time him you know communicated properly look mm. at the processes and other things so him why me looking more questions have me come up to yeah or how. Yeah. The yeah. media is always uh, striving to tell the truth, mm. uh, but truth is always hard to come by because <coughs> the very people who uh, are custodian of the truth sometimes and most of the time are going to come out here yeah, mm. to tell us. Uh, and so I think this uh, implication of people hiding the truth mm. Uh, him come in there, but like I said, uh, in support of what Ofani M said and George, uh, it's it's never easy. Mm. It's never easy to please everybody. Mm. Yeah, mm. Uh, in situations like this. Yeah. Uh, but I think a very important point now, Ofani M men- mentioned him. If members of Parliament are not uh, accounting. For the funds where they give him locket, RCD of Nami Minimia, how much more? But by what account for this one where him got him loose ends no more? Because mm. from from the chief of staff, the prime minister's office, him he say the one for the news conference where Karim that the mechanism uh, for auditing purposes am mm. now part of it now or the visits yeah, mm. and uh, they will account for it at the end. Mm. So, so me, me doubt him too much. Mm. So I think if uh, we yeah. listen back through the whole discussions when take place this time, it's it's basically not so much about the process which the media is after. It's so much about the accountability yeah. part of it, yeah. Yeah. making the uh, uh, people in government accountable for the huge amount of money mm. uh, under the care, like you have impressed, given to public servants, where I've got the issue for what the casual workers uh, those are the things yeah. which the media are concerned about, especially when it comes to ESP, like uh, 2.3 million impress. You hold them or some, like example, George, you have 2.3 million dollars impress under your name, and then you now go for dish him out, Lord Casual Workers. Uh, I think those are the issues which uh, the media have a concern about. Yeah, not. I think. Yeah, mm. you, yeah you, I think those are very genuine concerns from the media, and not only media, but the public okay. as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. because you must account yeah. for any public funds you spending. Yeah. yeah, and that's very important for government for take note them. Mm. Uh, me just like for highlighting number, there are processes law, public finance management act. Yeah. Uh, um, Law, law Ministry of Finance, financial mm. instructions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are processes where him in place for guiding now how he may spend in public funds, how he may by retire him at the end, mm. so that the records in place and then uh, after that they will be audited yeah. to check if money he may spend for papers blame or him diverted somewhere. Mm. So those processes now him in place, mm. and then you may should I mean look forward for what now outcome of processes of him fulfill him or whether we achieve this. Spending mm. for its purpose, or the areas of same nahem. I think mm-hmm. if you need for garam clear understanding, no mm-hmm. by him uh, avoid him, uh, him raise him, uh, say expectations for people and talent story in a way that people look him government or some oh, officers here, or the steal him selling no, him you see now which is him oh. unfair look at the yeah. officers here too. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I'm based on previous report, Lord Records, Auditor, yes. uh, mm. Office, Lord Auditor General too. Yeah, and like previous reports. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah and that is very important mm. for UMI Media. Mm. Get those reports. Uh, Auditor General's office have opened for UMI mm. 
every working day for get them information from Ota. They keep the records and him by be very good for if you may go visit him Ota, then extract what is in those reports and then we can mm. publish stories yeah. where me based on facts. Yeah, mm. based on facts. Mm. Thank you so much, panelists. Thank you so much, Ewin. Um, you're watching Media Watch. This is Hemi, one for a program blow Media Association of Solomon Islands, Masi. And uh, we've come to the end of our panel discussions for today. Uh, our panelists again, Ewin Angiki, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hemi, sub editor, Blue Island Star newspaper. We've got Alfred Sasako, uh, <laughs> chief of you. staff, Los Solomon Star newspaper, a long time one, Lo Media too. We've got Ofani Eremai, uh, once a uh, uh, editor. As well this time enjoying his life as a freelancer uh, and also George Hemming director of government communication <coughs> thank you so much uh, guys for coming on to the show today so basically him now one my discussions play me him me Kasim I'm your host and moderator Gina Kekia thank you for watching mm -hmm.